Bruce, the U.S. isn't ruling out giving Moscow legal binding guarantees that its missile defense shield won't be directed against Russia. But it says a cooperation agreement should be signed first. Does it look like the impasse will be broken soon? I don't think so. I think the U.S. intends to continue surrounding Russia and China with these so-called missile defense systems, uh, claiming that uh, they're really aimed at Iran. But we know that Iran has no nuclear weapons today, and they have no missiles capable of hitting the United States. So indeed, this system is aimed at Russia. Uh, I believe it has a lot to do with the fact that Russia has the world's largest supply of natural gas. And don't we know by now that the Pentagon's primary job today is to serve as a resource extraction service on behalf of corporate globalization. Why do you think Washington is so slow in giving Russia these guarantees? Because I don't think they intend to give Russia those guarantees. In fact, what I see happening now inside the United States using the mainstream media, I see Russia and China being demonized over and over again by the U.S. I think the strategy is to make the American people feel that Russia and China are the aggressors. Now, we find that it's virtually impossible to get any mainstream media coverage over this U.S. encirclement of Russia and China. I just finished a 30-day speaking tour from San Diego and California all the way to Seattle and Washington, 24 cities, where I spoke about this very U.S. encirclement with missile defense systems of Russia and China, and the mainstream media would not touch this uh, issue and this speaking tour that I did. So. The American people really know very little about it, but instead we hear a lot about how Russia and China are expanding their military, which of course uh, is happening largely because the U.S. is militarily encircling both those countries today. Now, Moscow says it will develop uh, brand new weapons to counter the missile shield over concerns the shield could intercept current technology. Does this have the hallmarks of a new arms race here? Sadly, I think it does. I th uh, I'm against any country developing more weapons these days. But we don't need a new arms race. We have a big problem on this planet called climate change that we need all the countries of the world to uh, help deal with. But in fact, when you're being surrounded, as Russia and China is today, one begins to understand why they feel the need to increase their military, especially when the United States Space Ca uh, Command is wargaming a first strike attack on China every year now for the past several years, set in the year 2016. So, in fact, when they're wargaming uh, a first strike attack at the same time that Russia and China are being surrounded, you can understand why those two countries uh, feel like they have to respond. Now, Bruce, but it's oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to ask you very briefly. Uh, it's election year in the U.S., and President Obama wants Moscow to sort of cut him some slack until re-election. But what will happen to their missile defense dialogue if he's not re-elected? Well, I think it's going to continue whether he's reelected or not. I don't really believe that statement that Obama made uh, in uh, South Korea that, you know, give me some time, let me get reelected. Uh, I don't believe that for a moment that Obama was really serious about that. Uh, I think he's just trying to uh, get Russia to back off a little bit, stop applying so much pressure about this. I think the U.S. is clearly committed. All the way back to 2001, the Washington Post reported that the U.S. was going to pivot its uh, foreign and military policy into the Asia Pacific. I, had, I think it has much to do with encircling uh, Russia and China, trying to control access to resources, particularly in Central Asia around the Caspian Sea, trying to control the the uh, direction that pipelines go to move the oil and natural gas from the Caspian Sea. So this is a long-term project that the United States is undertaking to really control the declining resources around the earth. I don't think it's going to be slowed down by any president, uh, any new president that gets elected. All right. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Bruce Gagnon for, from spaceforpeace.org. Thank you for your time. Thank you.